So I just wanted to put this video up because um, I'm trying to teach myself some uh, shoemaking um, and uh, because I'm trying to learn these things I've been scouring YouTube and online um, and I found a number of uh, channels that have been very useful. Bill Bird um, making orthopedic shoes uh, tells you very very um, skillfully and knowledgeably um, with, he's got something like 30 or 40 years of experience making shoe lasts um, and the uh, there's other stage other channels on YouTube that have been very helpful to me um, and so I as little as I know I figure um, perhaps there's somebody out there that this will be useful to so uh, I hope you find some value or some use in it and uh, if so please share it with somebody else thanks so I just wanted to show a uh, first uh, try here uh, these are the first pair of shoes I've made uh, obviously these are non-professional and they are for me but um, I wanted to show something because I was trying to figure out how to make a pair of uh, comfortable work shoes that are kind of like light hikers uh, durable comfortable and um, you know hopefully not looking too bad so I ended up uh, deciding since having a, uh, a cup sole was not really an option for me due to price and other things uh, so what I determined I would do is uh, use a type of sole called an opanka sole. Uh, this is one where it actually uh, wraps, the leather of the sole actually wraps up around the side of the uh, upper. So uh, this is an example after I've done some additional steps to it. Um, and it's actually the, there's a layer of uh, three to four ounce leather that has been skived up around the toe and you know really this whole area here and it's got a stitch line uh, about three sixteenths of an inch down uh, down from the top edge uh, it's hand stitched using a stitching awl uh, that's one of these that has the uh, the little barb in there to catch the thread um, and I'll show a trick with that that I had to figure out when I was trying to do the toe. Uh, it was really a pain in the neck even without the, uh, the uh, laces in there. But uh, the process, once you have your shoe lasted, um, what I did is uh, I made a template. Uh, and so obviously there's the outline of the shoe um, and it works the same for left or right. Um, and this would be where you would sky from here and out. Uh, the other parts are obviously the, the amount of lap I wanna have. Now the heel and the toe have kind of a funky uh, amount here, and this was just a personal preference. Um, I wanted that uh, because I know that there's gonna be a lot of strain where I have the ball joint um, I wanted that extra strength to have the toe up around there as well as I, uh, for my work I have to crouch down a lot and uh, the heel was actually as a design uh, intended to help strengthen the heel seam which is here. I wanted to make sure that it had a solid sole uh, as well as one that could be relatively easily resold, uh, assuming these work out uh, down the line. So uh, what I did, and I will uh, unwrap this, this, uh, the Opanka sole is actually, uh, I soaked it down uh, just briefly um, and it, when it's in its uh, damp state, not soaking wet, but damp, um, you want to form it around. And the easiest thing is obviously make sure that your 
your heel and your toe are centered. Uh, but when you've got that uh, centered, the easiest place obviously to start is around the arch or around the heel. Um, and those parts obviously take the form very easily. Uh, looks like I got a little crease here. Um, so when you get to the toe, uh, there's a different issue. And that is you have a lot of pieces of leather that are trying to uh, get flat. And so after a while of essentially kind of working that, so I had the straps all the way around up to where I could no longer go with the strap uh, easily and where I had a lot of material starting to fold. Uh, and then once I had the leather back to, I would call it lightly damp. Um, I forget the technical term for when the leather has started to almost uh, dry out um, but still malleable. At that point, I took a very sharp uh, clicker knife and determined where I needed the seams to be. And then what I did is I, uh, I did put a uh, somewhat random, but not exactly random, uh, slice coming up here. And then I had one piece folded over the other then I made a nice, a much cleaner vertical uh, slice on only one of the layers. And I did the same thing in all the different parts and then I again worked it to as flat as I could. And that helps to alleviate some of the uh, stretch that you're going to get. Um, and then I completed very carefully, completed the cut through the second layer. Um, on these different seams. And at that point, um, this again is the second shoe. So I learned some, uh, some from some of my previous mistakes. But uh, at that point, what I did is I put some of these, these are 18 gauge, they're just three quarter inch uh, tacks. And then you're and of course you want to try and draw that seam as tight as you can. Right now the top still has to get trimmed to the correct shape. Um, obviously the template is a oversized uh, shape, but uh, at that point you can put a few tacks in the different uh, locations that make sense. Uh, for me it was as close as I could to where I thought my seam was going to be, uh, even though I know that this uh, piece is going to get uh, covered with a rubberizing um, finish. So, um, and then essentially just uh, hammering it uh, flat, or I should say flat and closed with, uh, if you have it, uh, a nice uh, cobbler's hammer. And same thing on the, the heel. Of course, the heel, again, I wanted to make sure that my uh, stitch seam here was going to be uh, reinforced by this spanning leather. And so these are going to get uh, contact cement, um, using barge, um, contact cement on all of this, uh, the side walls all the way around. And of course, you're going to want to mark exactly where your, uh, your opanka sole or your, the, the sole that's lapping up here is going to be ending. Uh, use a scratch all or something like that, uh, or a silver pen. And then you can scuff the, the upper as you need to. Um, make sure you got a good grab. And then uh, once you've got your contact cement on the exterior, you're gonna put contact cement down the center only so that these areas have a little bit of room for, for uh, yield and so on as you're using the shoe. Uh, I would take it off but, uh, right now, uh, but underneath of here, of course, we have the, the, the sole, uh, that, which is wrapped around, and filling in the void uh, is several layers of the eighth inch cork. I have sheets of it so that um, it fills the void in, gives it just a tiny bit of um, shock absorption. but. Um, and then it's rasped to 
a flat surface. Um, so this is going to take about eight hours or so to fully dry. At that point, it is going to be somewhat stiff. But by the time I get done, uh, I'm personally, I'm choosing to use, uh, this is 10 ounce uh, tooling leather, which I'm going to put, this is obviously the, the finished side or the um, outside of the leather, the flesh side is facing in. I'm gonna put the flesh side of this 10 ounce onto here. Um, and what I, my experience before was I actually traced around the, uh, the line and I cut it nice and clean so that once I glue this on, I don't have to try to trim it without uh, nicking this undersole. Because this undersole is, theoretically, I could use this as a uh, the finished sole, um, but I don't, I don't want to have uh, a leather sole um, for my work shoes. Uh, it's too slippery and uh, nails and so on and so forth. So uh, this will get glued on and then uh, hand stitched all the way around the perimeter. Again, about three sixteenths or uh, two and a half millimeters or so from the edge of this thicker leather. Um, and that's pretty much the, the outline of my last uh, that's going to be this line. Um, as a secondary thing, I, as I said, I wanted these to be um, have a rubber sole. So I purchased, after a great deal of research, I was going to try to get a cup sole, but the problem is you have to have a matching uh, last for the cup sole or your shoes are not going to fit. I wanted to have a broad toe and I also was looking for one without a, uh, a heel. I wanted to have sort of like a tennis shoe, but it's, it's more of a, it's a wedge um, work shoe. And I know it probably looks a little rough and it is, <laughs> but um, the point of this is uh, to help bond as well as strengthen everything uh, inside the heel as well as really at, at the ball and, and the, the front of the foot, there is a layer of EVA foam. Um, I used, uh, I got a sheet of, this is half inch EVA foam, and this was cut to the shape. Once you have your uh, shoe lasted and your Opanka sole on there, you can trace around, leave a little bit of extra and um, cut it with a, with a knife. And then I found uh, using a rasp or 50 grit sandpaper by hand or even a belt sander if you have it, although it does tend to gum up the belt sander. Um, once you do get it flush into the right shape that you're looking for, um, after doing some research, I actually found uh, finding that this got pretty good reviews even on shoe soles. Uh, of course, it's not going to be as good as a formed solid piece of, of rubber or polyurethane foam or something to that effect. But again, that wasn't an option for me. I also found that where I had certain voids um, around here in between the Opanka sole or the leather that's lapped up here and the EVA foam, there was a couple of areas where the EVA foam kind of broke away once I was uh, sanding it. So I ended up using some of this uh, Flex Seal paste uh, and um, then I lightly coated the whole thing with the Flex Seal Max. Uh, of course, in doing all of that, you do have to mask off the line wherever you don't want rubber to be because uh, it will stick to this, it'll ruin the finish. Uh, even though this leather is, this is calf leather, um, and it is, uh, it was natural uh, when I got it. I did dye it to an appropriate, or what I thought was appropriate color. Um, and so just for what it's worth, for anybody that's trying to make your own shoes and you wanna have um, a different look, 
um, or you're looking to make the sole, for instance, if you you don't mind having a leather sole, uh, or if you're okay with having just a very thin rubber tread, these are, uh, this is an eighth of an inch thick uh, rubber that you can get them on Amazon for nine bucks, and theoretically you could just glue and trim it. Um, but again, I was looking for a little bit more than that, and I also wanted to have the, uh, the 10 ounce leather um, that's stitched onto here, and I know it's overkill, but um, that's what these are for, is <laughs> trying to make sure that these things last. So um, if this is a colossal fail, I'll probably either take this video down or um, let you know of the flaws I found in my, my prototype here, I guess you could call it. Um, but uh, I hope this is useful to somebody. So before I forget, here's the trick I, I learned with uh, using the awl um, to stitch. Let's see if I can make that. There you go. Uh, if you are stitching uh, on the side, it's easy. You can just uh, poke it through and, and catch your thread on the inside by hand. But the further you get into the toe, the more difficult it is. It's not hard to reach to the awl. It's difficult to create the loop that you need uh, in order to catch, for the awl to catch that. So what I figured out is, and I'm not sure why this isn't better broadcast or whatever on different YouTube channels and so on, is uh, making a simple tool. Uh, this is just a scrap of oak I had. And what I did is essentially, I cut a kind of a sloppy, but I'll probably end up making a better version of this, but it was uh, in the heat of frustration to try to make this work. Uh, what I figured out is if you have this uh, fairly narrow, I actually put a bend in it so that I could reach more easily up or down if I needed to. Um, and you loop the um, your thread, almost like dental floss holders, you know, work. And what you're aiming for is to get this into location where when you've got the awl going through the side, because of course you can poke the awl exactly where you want it. And depending on how far in or out you go, then you can just bring this little thing there. And as you start to pull the awl out, you maintain a little bit of the tension and pull it out. Um, just a little side note, uh, don't do like I did at first. I found uh, I was trying to hook the thread basically exactly right where I would want that thread to be in the end. And what ends up happening is it doesn't have enough slack. So you have to uh, go to the end of your thread, uh, basically you know, some of that extra that you've got, bring that to where your, your all is so that you can catch it. And then this will get, this thread is going to get beat up. It's going to get like that uh, very often. Uh, even if it's not quite that bad, some of it you can smooth out. You can uh, run it with your finger with the all to kind of uh, smooth out. And um, this is a woven wax coated thread, a synthetic. Um, used for hand stitching and so on. Uh, we have it in white and probably a million different colors. But don't uh, don't try to do that exactly where you'd want that thread to be and then going through the, the loop and very close because you'll end up ruining the stitch that's going to stay. So uh, you want to bring the extra slack there, hook that, and you can pull out that extra and you'll figure out a process or a system that works well. But uh, I just wanted to mention that little tool, uh, very simple. It's about uh, seven inches long, seven or eight inches long. Of course, you can make it depending on what shoe you have. Um, and it's fairly quick once you, uh, you kind of get accustomed to it. 
And I did end up having to kind of deepen the, uh, the cutout or this notch so that I would have a bigger target, you could say, for the awl to go through. Um, you, you probably want to make it of some type of a hardwood or uh, plastic if you have that as an option. Um, and again, keeping some of that tension on it as you are pulling back, because if you don't, the awl will slip off, uh, or at least that's what I found.